representing graphs and graph isomorphism uh, so two graphs are said to be isomorphic if there is one-to-one -one correspondence so in here we say two graphs are isomorphic if there is one-to-one -one correspondence between their vertices their vertex set that preserve edges okay so we'll learn this what this means in detail actually two graphs will be isomorphic like if they have the same shape the same construction of vertices and edges but maybe the names of edges are different some of them might be uh, numbers and but the names of edges in some other graph might be letters and maybe the places of edges are different but once we connect uh, the edges the vertices of this graph with the vertices of the other graph connect here I means every vertex in this graph correspond to a specific vertex here and so on we will find the edges connecting the vertices and their corresponding vertices in both graphs is still preserved I believe this is still this statement is still uh, not clear for you this is fine and we will try to make it more clear but let's start we will start with representing graphs what do we mean by representing a graph uh, there are some ways to do uh, representing uh, graphs uh, we start with what's so called adjacency adjacency lists that specify that vertices that are adjacent to each other of the graph the following way let's start with uh, the vertex A in here so here is the vertex we will see what vertices are adjacent to A we see it is B adjacent to A so we list B here C is adjacent to A so we list C uh, and also E is adjacent to A so we list E so B, C and E are adjacent to A same thing if we go to b and see whose which vertices are adjacent to b we have only one vertex which is a so a is the only vertex that uh, is adjacent to uh, b i shall not make um, maybe uh, the, the, the rows in two direction that this may mislead you so uh, let me remove the arrow here okay again if I use a different color for the vertex C which vertices are adjacent to C A E and D here we go this is C and the vertices that are adjacent A D and E and so on the vertices that are adjacent to D are C and E here we go C and E and the vertices that are that are adjacent to E are D, C, and A. Here we go. So this is a simple way to present a graph. Okay. So this is called adjacency, adjacency list. Okay. Again, here there is another example where we uh, use adjacency list to. Uh, represent this graph so let's see let's start with a okay here uh, here's a it is a directed graph so we need to uh, consider something in here so let's start with a represent a direct graph by listing all vertices that are terminal vertices of edges starting at a vertex of a graph so what's happening here we will go at the vertex A and we will take vertices that adjacent to A but not all of them the ones that are terminal for some edge starting from A so we will look at the vertex A and see which edges starts at A takes A as an initial value and it takes another vertex at a ter as a terminal vertex and then we will take these ones for instance this edge goes to B so I will take B as a terminal vertex this edge goes to C so I take C 
this edge goes to D so I will take D and this edge goes to C uh, E sorry I will take E so those are the terminal vertices for the edges that have A as an initial vertex let's go on green and see which vertices are adjacent to E in a directed graph so this vertex uh, so we'll go to E in here this is E so we'll have this vertex going to D so we have D in here and this vertex goes to C going from E to C so we will have C this vertex goes from E to B so we will have B here okay good let's do them all let's go to B B there is a vertex an edge going from uh, B to B itself so we will take B and there is another edge going from a B to D so we will take D okay let's use another color let's go for uh, blue let's take C there is an edge going from C to C itself so we will take C an edge going from C to A so we'll take A and an edge going from C to E we will take E and now D look here there is nothing there is no edge going from D to some other vertex so it's empty here so it is not about the vertices that are, at, that are adjacent to D it's not the same way we just have done the example before the example before above here it cares about adjacency only no direction here but once we make the adjacency list for directed graphs we will take for any vertex we will take the other vertices that are terminal for some edges starting from the first vertex and there is no such vertices for D okay so this is the difference between uh, the adjacency list for directed and undirected graphs okay now one more way to represent graphs is adjacency matrix what we have seen above there is adjacency list now we will see the adjacency matrix which is more efficient way the, uh, to represent a graph than the one we have seen before already so okay if we start with a graph with the vertices set of vertices v set of vertices e and we are requiring this to be a simple graph okay and we assume we have n vertices and the vertices are listed in some order to make adjacency matrix for a graph it is important to agree on what order the vertices are listed there are so many orders that n vertices can be listed actually if we have n elements and then we want to order them in some list then we will have n factorial choices okay so we will fix some choice for listing the vertices v1 v2 to vn and according to this list we will make the adjacency matrix okay so if i change the listing the adjacency matrix will be changed so let's start let's fix in this and see how we get the adjacency matrix of a which is denoted a sub g the adjacency matrix A of the graph G with respect to this listing this is what I am saying to this listing here of vertices is n by n 0 1 matrices that consist of A I J so I is from 1 to n and J is from 1 to n and how these uh, are listed so just to make it clear for you what this this means we have seen this before this is 1 1 a 1 2 all the way till we reach 1 n a 2 1 a 2 2 all the way till we reach 2 n and then here we keep going a n 1 
a n two all the way till we reach a n n. Okay, and how these entries are defined in here? How I defined a sub i j? We will see. If v i and v j are adjacent, remember this notation in an undirected graph. This notation means an edge, right? This is uh, means an edge between set notation. We mean an edge. Once it is directed, it is a parentheses notation. Remember that. So if vi and vj, uh, this is an edge, which means vi and vj are ad adjacent, connected by some vertex, then we will make a i a j to be 1. If they are not adjacent, there is no edge connecting them, then a i a j will be 0. Okay, it is simple to construct. Let us look at this example. Now, uh, we want to represent this graph with adjacent matrices matrix now we will agree the list is a b c d which means i will put a here b here c here and d here and again i will put a and b c and d now we look here a there is no edge connecting a to itself so we have zero here okay but there is an edge connecting a and b so we will have one here this one and it is connecting B and A so we'll have one in here correct so A is connected to B that means B connected to A so if A I J equals 1 then A J I equals 1 let me write that if A I J equals 1 this gives A J I equals 1 and the opposite also okay now let's see a is connected to c so we will have this one because a is connected to c and also c is connected to a we have that one a is connected to d so we will have this one in here and d is connected to a good now let's go to b is b connected to c yes b is connected to c so we'll have this one okay b is not connected to itself there is no loop so we'll have zero in here and b is not connected to d so we'll have zero here and zero here again this one this one in here is because c is connected to b and this one is here is b connected to c now what's about the remaining c connected to itself no so we'll have zero here uh, c connected to d no we'll have zero in here and in here and c is not connected to itself we'll have zero in there so this is symbol right okay now if we change the order of matrices uh, sorry of vertices instead of a b c d me we may list them in uh, c d b a then the matrix will change so it depends on the list of the vertices so let's let us see another uh, example for adjacent uh, matrix so get used to see this expression adjacency matrix draw a graph with the adjacency matrix with uh, respect to ordering of the vertices a b c d again so we will have here a b c d and again a b c d let us see a is connected to b and to c so we'll have one in here one in here but we'll have zero because A is not connected to itself and it is not connected to D. Let's see B. B is connected to A and connected to D. Here we go. B is connected to A and connected to D. And again, um, what? C is connected to A and to D. Here we go. C is connected to A and to D. But it is zero in here and in here because C is not connected to itself and it is not connected to B okay what's about D this connected to C and B here we go this connected to B we have one here to C one here this zero because D is not connected to A and this is zero here because D is not connected to itself okay so uh, we are done if you notice that uh, if you notice that now we are getting 
a symmetric matrix, right? Because if 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 vertex some vertex is connected to the other, then the other is connected to to the first. So again, I want to write that if a g equals one, if and only if uh, a, a g i i j equals one, if and only if a i j uh, i j equals one, and same thing, if a i j equals zero, that means vertex i is not vert connected to vertex j that means vertex g, j is not connected to vertex vertex i so j i equals zero so on these positions i j j i they must either both have one or both have zero so we are having a uh, asymmetric matrix if you notice so this is the very first uh, notice that we will make uh, right now same thing applies for the matrix we have already got in there. It is symmetric again if you look at it. Okay, so we have noticed the following about uh, adjacency matrix. The adjacency matrix of a simple graph is symmetric. So this is the very first thing we noticed. Okay, now because simple graphs has no loops, no loops that means no edges connected to itself by an uh, no vertex is connected to itself by an by a loop by an edge so a i will equal zero for all i a sorry a i i will equal zero for all i equals all of them from one to n for all the vertices now adjacency matrices can also be used to represent uh, and directed graphs with no loops and with multiple edges oh okay so it's uh, we represent we used adjacency matrices to represent simple graphs which means uh, uh, no loops and no multiple edges now this says here we can use the same idea to represent undirected graphs that has loops and multiple edges so we can do it with loops and multiple edges no problem uh, so the adjacency matrix we have already seen consists of zeros and ones now because we have multiple edges between two vertices we might have two edges then we will have two in the corresponding place in the uh, adjacency matrix so let's look at this example here so uh, adjacency matrix that represent the pseudo graph of, uh, of uh, with the ordering vertices a b c d again so this is a b c d and again this is a, a b c d okay let's see a is not connected to itself so uh, this will be zero okay a is connected to b in three vertices in three edges so we will have three here and also three here because a is connected to b by three edges that means b is connected to a by three edges there is no edge between A and C, so we'll have that zero and that zero here. So we're still having the symmetry. A is connected to D by how many edges? One, two edges. Okay, so we have two in here and two in here. Okay, so let's see more. Uh, what else? B. B is connected to A. We got it. B is not connected to itself, we, so we have zero in here. There's no loop at B. B is connected to C with using one edge. Here we go. It is one in here, B, C, and C, B. And B is connected to D with one edge, B to D and D to B. Okay, so let's go to C. C is connected to itself. So we have one here because of this loop. Because of this loop, we have one here okay now C is connected to D yes by two edges so we will have two in here and two in here good now D is not connected to itself so we will have zero in here so good now we have two one two zero and three in the adjacency matrix okay so what this says now, adjacency matrix for directed graphs. Good. So we are done with the adjacency matrix for undirected graphs with or without multiple edges and loops. Now we will do the same thing for graphs 
directed ones the the, the, the the directed graphs with multiple edges and loops but here we care about the direction of edges and we will take the uh, terminal point of an edge going from some vertex so let's see what this says the adjacency matrix for directed graph does not have to be symmetric okay why because there are n they may there there may not be an edge going from v i to v v j to v i whenever there is an edge that going from v i to v j that means we might have an edge going from v i to v j so we will count v j as an adjacent for v i and then we will give one in there from v i to v j so a i j will be one but let's assume that there is no edge going from vj to vi there is no edge in that direction so we will say vi uh, a j a j i equals zero okay so let me uh, make that clear because uh, i may confuse you here so let me say this is vi and this is vj and in the graph we have an edge going that way we will see in this case a i j is one because there is an edge going from i to v i to v j but there is no edge comes from v j to v i and then we will write that a j i equals zero okay okay or if you wish if we make it in 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 red if we have that and another one here then I will write a j i to be what two you agree with that okay so let us see now let's go to this uh, graph a a is connected to itself so from uh, a to a so we got this one here okay because we have this edge let's see from a to b we have that so we have one here okay from a to c we have one going and two from a to c we will have two so, so let me give them different colors here the green so i will have this okay a to d how they are connected a to d there is one edge going from a to d so i will have one here okay good let's repeat the same thing for b we have one edge going from b to a so this is why we have so okay let me see a b c d so a b c d so from b to a one edge so i have that one and also from let me see b to itself do we have an edge going from b to itself no so we will have this zero okay what's next from b to c do we have anything going from b to c no so we'll have zero okay what else do we have anything any edge going from b to what to d how many we have two b to d okay b to d we have two great let's go to c do we have an edge going okay from c to a yes we have one going from c to a so i have one here from c to b nothing so we have zero from c to itself okay we have one edge going from c to itself here we go one what's about from c to what t t when i have one edge in here okay d i have one uh, no edge going from d to a okay no edge going from to d to a but there is one edge going from a to d so i got one in here i, I got zero in here there's an edge going from d to b yes we have two edges going from d to b this is one this is one so that's why we have two in here 
from D to C we have one that's why we have one here from D to itself there's no we have zero I think this is easy for you yes it is direct and easy so we call this an adjacency matrix another way to represent uh, graphs rather than uh, adjacency matrices is the incidence matrix incidence matrix so what is the difference between incidence matrix and adjacency matrix let's see so we start with a graph with the vertices v and edges e and directed graphs at the beginning and we assume we have a fixed listing of the vertices e1 to e2 and a fixed listing for the edges also okay then the incidence matrix with respect to this ordering of v and e now here we care for the ordering of the vertices and also the ordering of the edges okay now this matrix is n times m matrix with m i j are the following so let me uh, emphasize that so we have n columns this is the number of columns this is the number of columns and this is the number of rows no no oh, I mix uh, sorry the first one is the number of rows <laughs> this is the number of rows and this is the number of columns okay uh, I, I switch between them it might happen to you uh, so let me write that this is m1 1 m1 2 m1 3 all the way till we reach okay we're using now okay m1 so we're using m again that's fine okay let me use write the second row it is m2 1 m2 2 m2 3 m2 m we keep going m n 1 m n 2 m n 3 all the way till we reach m n m okay now what's going in here when we go to the right to your right now when you see it I see it to my right and you see it to your right when we go right we are counting a columns agree because these are columns if I keep moving this way I go to the other column keep moving that way I go to the other column so if, when we go right we are counting columns so that the, the, the integer to the right here are the columns okay okay and to the uh, left are the rows okay when you confuse them the same thing as I did I just go back and remember them this way okay now how we decide the values of each m i j okay we will say it is one m i j it is one when edge e j is incident with v i that means the vertex v i is uh, incident to that edge it is on that it is connected to the edge e j okay if this happens so we will say m i j is one if it does not then we say zero okay so example will make that very clear let's go to this graph let's see this is v1 so the order is uh, of uh, edges e1 e2 e3 all the way to e6 and we named this v1 v2 tv till v5 let's see v1 with e1 i will make it one why because where is v1 it is in here and e1 this is e1 so v1 is an edge is a vertex for that edge so 
we say e1 is an incident for v1 so we have one in here what's about v1 and e2 where is e2 e2 is in here so again it is incident to v1 so we have one in here what's about v1 to e3 where is e3 e3 is in here so e3 is not incident to v1 so we'll have zero what's about e4 again e, e uh, e4 is not incident to v1 we have zero same thing e5 and e6 none of them is incident to e1 let's go to v2 where's v2 here we go v2 is incident to e3 e6 and e4 so i will go to e3 but one e4 put one in here e6 put one in here and zeros everywhere let's go to v3 where is v3 it is in here it is incident to e5 and e6 only so here we go e5 and e6 and uh, we will put the meaning to be zeros what's about v4 where is v4 it is in here and it is incident to e1 and e3 this is to e1 and e3 and zeros everywhere else and what's left v5 is incident to e2 e4 e5 where is this? this is e2 e4 e5 and zero everywhere good so this is the incident matrix of this graph easy huh okay another incident matrix but this time with uh the, the above there was symbol graph this is not a symbol graph it has multiple edges and loops and it's called PC do graph okay let's see so let's have fun v1 is incident to e1 e2 and e3 here we go e1 e2 and e3 and zeros everywhere v2 incident to e2 e3 e4 e6 e7 e2 e3 e4 e6 e7 and zeros everywhere okay and what's about v3 where's v3 it's incident to e4 and 5 and 0 everywhere what's about v4 incident to what to e8 and e7 here we go this is e8 7 and zeros everywhere and v5 incident to e5 and e6 here we go e5 and e6 and zeros everywhere again this is called incidence matrix so far we have learned the adjacency matrix which must be symmetric for simple undirected graphs and we have seen the incidence matrix okay so the incidence matrix is uh, consists of zeros and ones but the adjacency matrix may consist of uh, different numbers than zeros and one whenever we have multiple edges okay isomorphism of uh, graphs it means necessarily that two graphs are the same but the way are drawn makes them look different while they are not uh, we will see uh, for example uh, what do you think about uh, these graphs Would you consider this graph and this graph to be the same graph? So this one, uh, the vertices are on a circle. Are they the same graph? Do you consider th them the same graph? What do you think? These two graphs are the same, right? You agree? These two graphs are the same? Yes, we consider them to be the same, correct? So this is what we mean by isomorphism. Uh, let me draw another uh, two graphs. Let's have fun. Uh, so we are done with that now. Let's, uh, let me give you this graph here. Do you see that graph? Now, what if I uh, make a graph like that?
do they look the same for you these two graphs yes so why they look the same for you because if you r uh, relate this with that right and this with that and this vertex with this vertex and this vertex with that one and then this vertex with this vertex in here and then you will find that the there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the vertices that preserves edges right what do i mean when i say preserve edges take this vertex it goes where here and this vertex goes here right now look at the edge between them look at the edge between them this one right now the edge between their images is this one so it is the same edge right so the edge is preserved between them yes it is as if we redraw the pyramid exactly in the in the we 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 mean now you got the idea so two graphs are isomorphic if we can just reshape them without cutting edges can you transfer the first graph to the second with reshaping without cutting no cutting is allowed no edge is allowed to be cut no vertex is allowed to be separated from an edge can you transform one of these graphs to be, to be the other without doing any cutting yes we can folding stretching compressing rolling rotating reflecting yes okay so they are isomorphism so this is the idea of isomorphism simple okay but uh, like see it from different position yes from different position or maybe more than different position playing with the shape or rotating uh, uh, doing a lot of movements you are allowed all kind of movements but do not cut anything do not separate any vertex not allowed to uh, separate a vertex and then reconnect it again okay so you got the idea this is what we mean by isomorphism in Arabic it means tashakul tashakul they have the same shape they have uh, but how to prove mathematically that two graphs are, are isomorphic in general we will not be we might not be able to do this trans translations to movement from one graph to other using eyes our eyes we may not see that so we need to do some mathematical characterization for the idea just you have uh, uh, got in your mind. So I already did it here when I transformed one vertex to the other. Each vertex from this graph is connected exactly to one vertex in the other graph. And when I connect this vertex and this vertex from, say I have a graph here, and I connect this vertex to, to a vertex in the other graph, and same thing, for some other vertex to another vertex in this graph now I want to look at the edges that connected these two vertices it is the same image as the edges connecting the, their images of the vertices so how do I describe this in mathematics here it is let's go for it so the definition it says two simple graphs v1 uh, g1 that consists of vertices uh, v1 and edges e1 another graph called g2 consists of vertices v2 and e2 we will call them isomorphic when okay let's see when when there exists a one to one okay on to okay function from v1 to v2 so i want one to one and on two function from the set of vertices of this one graph to the other graph I want every vertex here to be connected with the with some vertex in the other graph and vice versa so I want a one-to-one -one and a two map function between the vertices but this is not enough with the property that look in here if a and B are connected somewhere in the graph G1 okay then I use the map to connect A with and let me use this color 
I use the map to connect A with some vertex in the other graph in G2 and see what is the image of vertex B according to that map and then consider the edge between them now it says here we go here we go it says uh, if it says if A and B are adjacent in G then F of A and F of B are adjacent in G2 so if and only if we have that so we need to have uh, a one-to-one -one and into map between the vertices and if two vertices are adjacent in the first graph I want their images also to be adjacent okay okay so that I, ca I say the function is an isomorphism so that the intuitive idea of graphs with different uh, shapes but essentially they are the same so that we can give it some characterization such a function is called an isomorphism okay let us see there is an example simple example here look at these two graphs this is the G and this is H you simply can say oh okay it is the same graph what I do with H if okay or maybe if I start with G this is G square right grab them this way and and uh, twist it twist G then you get H or you start at H it is a twisted already untwisted you get G they are the same graph but to prove it is uh, they are isomorphic we will send the map we will let the map uh, f of u1 you send u1 where where do you think you send u1 after the twisting send u1 to where okay tell me I'm waiting and you shall tell me where we send u2 and u3 and f of u4 now you know that uh, f is a function from uh, the the v to uh, w what is v the v is the set of vertices of the first graph it is u1 u2 u3 u4 no answer so far and what is w w is the set of the other vertices okay i just renamed them okay that's fine it's v1 v2 v3 v4 this is v tell me where you send u1 u2 u3 u4 so that you get an isomorphism i'm waiting where shall i send u1 to it tells you here it, it says okay send it to v1 that's fine boom 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 u2 send it to u4 thank you moda correct to v4 you mean v4 right u2 to v4 so i will send this here so that when i twisted v4 will take the place of u2 where i send u3 v3 good and now u4 one one choice lift so that we get one to one and then two this goes to u2 so this is an isomorphism good now if you check it out now u1 and u2 here are connected right so their images is is v1 and v4 are they connected yes okay let's see uh, u2 and u4 are connected their images is u2 is this one v4 and v4 is uh, and the image of u4 is v2 are they connected oh yes they are connected here we go okay v3 and v2 u3 and u4 okay so you can uh, just uh, check it for out check it out for the remaining pairs of vertices the ones that are connected in g their image is also connected in graph h so okay what this says isomorphic symbol graphs what about them must have the same number of vertices do you agree sure you must agree isomorphic symbol graphs they must have the same number of vertices right because we said one to one and on two map between the two set of vertices one to one and two means the two sets have the same number 
in general if f is from s any set a to b we have seen this and it is one to one and on two then we conclude what these two sets have the same cardinality right because we could associate to every element to every element of a is associated to some element in b and vice versa okay so isomorphic graph must have the same number of vertices and also the same number of edges you agree also the degrees of the vertices in an isomorphic symbol graph must be the same what does that mean what does that mean that means if I have if f from G to H uh, isomorphism and G and H are graphs okay and assume that V belongs to uh, uh, the vertices uh, so let me see here uh, G is the set of uh, vertices of G is V the set of vertices of H is W so let me say V is a vertex in V in the graph G then the sentence says what the degree of this vertex must be equal to the degree of its image right if you send the vertex to its image they must have the same properties they must have the same degree okay now do you see that what that means if I have a vertex and then in in the first graph if I have two graphs and then I have a vertex here this vertex must have an image in this graph right and they must have the same degrees all right that means every vertex here in this graph with it with its own degree there must be a corresponding vertex for it that have the same degree good that means if I have a vertex in the first graph whose degree is 6 then there must be a vertex in the second graph whose degree is also 6 this will be the image of the vertex in here good so if I find in some graph a vertex with degree some degree 6 3 or 5 some degree a vertex with some degree in this graph and I go to the other graph and then I don't find a vertex with the same degree that means the two graphs are not isomorphic all right good you agree with that now this example says that show the two graphs are not isomorphic oh, okay now this says here the two isomorphic graphs here they must have the same number of vertices so first thing I will count the number of vertices in the two graphs if I find them not equal then I say they are not isomorphic then I'm done they might be equal but the graphs are still not isomorphic what I go do next I go to the edges and count them if the two graphs got a different number of edges then it is done they are not isomorphic okay now what if I what if they have the same number of vertices the same number of edges I will go to count the degree of every vertex here and find try to find if there is another vertex a vertex in the other graph that has the same degree now that also means I might find for example two vertices in the first graph whose order are five then I must find two vertices in the, in the other graph whose order is 5 okay also I go to the other graph and I will find that the vertices have the following degrees 0 1 2 2 3 then I must find same thing here vertices with degrees 0 1 2 2 3 if I find something different then they are not isomorphic so okay 
let's see what's what makes these two graphs are not isomorphic tell me now okay I'm waiting we have a graph a G and H in here and the example says they are not isomorphic somebody can tell me I'm waiting okay now the, the reason for these two graphs are not isomorphic for this reason first in blue H has a vertex with degree 1 but G has no vertex with degree 1 also H has a vertex with degree 4 which is a vertex A and G has no vertex of degree 4 one more reason G has two vertices each one of them is of degree 3 two vertices of degree 3 in G but only one vertex of degree 3 in H so any of these is enough to prove that these two graphs are not isomorphic okay what's about these two graphs are they isomorphic or not that so if there is an isomorphism that isomorphism shall send f to w one of the choices or f to s or to v or to z it means that since f has degree 3 then the isomorphism shall send the vertex f to another vertex in h with degree 3 for instance let us assume that f goes to w here now notice in the graph g f is connected to two vertices e and g each of them has degree 2 now the image of f is connected to two vertices x and z one of them has degree 2 which is x and the other has degree 3 which is z so we cannot send f to w because the image of f here is connected to two vertices which is w one of them is of degree 2 and the other of degree 3 but f itself is connected to vertices each of them has degree 2 so we cannot send f to w you agree so what other choices we have for f let's send f to s same thing will happen s is connected to an edge whose degree is 2 and another edge whose degree is 3 and another edge whose degree is 3 again so f is the vertex f is connected to three vertices one of them is degree 3 which is b and two of them degree 2 now if s is the image of the vertex f then s is connected to three vertices but two of them are of degree 3 and one of them is degree 2 of so we cannot send f to s so what else we have choices we might send f to v same problem will happen in g f is connected to three vertices again one of them has degree three and two of them has degree two but v is connected to three vertices in h Two of them has degree 3 and one of them has degree 2, so we cannot do that. So what choice is left for us? Send F to Z. Same problem will happen. Z is connected to three vertices. Three of them, two of them has degree 3 and one of them has degree 2. But F has connected to three vertices. Two of them has degree 2. One only has degree 3. So we, we cannot send F to anywhere. We cannot send F to T. We cannot send F to T because F has degree 3, T has degree 2. We cannot send F to U for the same reason. And we cannot send it to Y and we cannot send it to X. So we cannot send F to any vertex. That preserves the number of... Uh, that preserves the degrees. 
so let me say it in uh, some word we cannot send f to a vertex so that we preserve the degrees of the adjacent vertices of either f or the image of f the vertex image of f so we have no isomorphism okay there is no general way to side to decide whether two graphs are isomorphic or no we will if you are given two graphs and then you are asked to prove they are to decide whether they are isomorphic or no you need first to hunt uh, let me say first you will see try to see if you can transform one of the graphs to the other by reflection rotating twisting flipping if you cannot then try to hunt for reasons that makes the graphs non isomorphic if you cannot then maybe you will look for some correspondence and prove they are isomorphic so in general we don't know we need to keep trying so one helpful way to show that a function from vertex set of a graph g to a vertex set of a graph h is an isomorphism is to show that the adjacency matrix of g is the same as the adjacency matrix of h this is one helpful way so okay let's let's try that let's try that but now it is it is very uh, not, not not very easy in here because the order of the vertices okay so let me say we talked about the adjacency matrix of g and the adjacency matrix of h but the adjacency matrix of a graph depends in the list of vertices that you are using so you have you don't have only one adjacency matrix for G. You have a lot of adjacency and factorial adjacency matrices of V because you have n factorial possible uh, listing for the vertices. Same thing applies for H. You don't have one adjacency matrix. You have n factorial of choices for this matrix H for H and same thing for G. So how you decide whether some adjacency matrices according to some orders of the matrices for the two graphs are the same or not so we will look for that so we'll try this in the following example there is no systematic way to do this no systematic way just uh, some talent and some just uh, just thing now let's let's see these two graphs g and h they have the same number of edges same number of vertices okay and if you look at the degrees of elements then you will find like we have two elements of degree three in each of them and the remaining elements are of degree two so that does not go against isomorphism okay so let's see u1 is not adjacent to any other vertex of degree two this is the very first hint okay u1 come here please you are adjacent to two vertices one of them is of degree three and the other one is degree three so we will try to send u1 and g to some vertex in h who has this property it is connected only to two vertices each one of them has degree three let's look for it which one is that which one is that it looks to me you before it looks to me that do you agree four is connected four shall i send one to four maybe to six to v6 so i have we have two choices see we have e either v4 or v6 so we don't know we'll make a choice we'll say okay, let's send it to v what v6 here and keep going we might end on something not good or which is not helpful so we go back and then choose the other one we left okay it is this way, this way. there is no systematic so we will uh, think to send u1 to v6 so here we go we are trying we either have the choice sending u1 to v4 or to v6 we chose for now to v6 and see if this will get, brings us to some end okay now last look for u2 u2 what what the property you have it is adjacent to u1 okay u2 and g is adjacent to u1 and v6 is the image of u1 so the image of u2 
must be adjacent to V6. Agree? So if I want to send U2 to somewhere, it must be either U3 or U, uh, V3 or V5. Good. U1 and V6 are correspondence. U2 is adjacent to U1. So the image of U2 must be adjacent to V6. And what are the vertices that are adjacent to V6 in H? They are either V3 or V5. Okay, which one we choose? Which one we choose? We have no preferences here. So let's make a choice. Okay, let's, so it says either V3 or V5. Let us choose V3 and if it does not work, we come back to V5. Okay. Now, we got U1 equals F of U1 equals V6, F of U2 equals V3. Now, tell me why we have to choose now. We are forced to choose U3, the image of U3 to be V4. Somebody tells me. Somebody tells me. Why now U3? We, why now we are forced to choose U3? to go to V4 these two choices here will force me to do so okay U3 is connected to one to what to U2 the image of U2 is what U is is V3 so the image of U3 must be connected to the image of U2 so it is v4 correct it could be v1 i cannot choose I, ca I cannot send somebody tell me i cannot send u3 to v1 i cannot do so tell me why Because U3 is connected to vertices, to two vertices, each one of them has degree 3. But V1 is connected to two vertices, one of them is degree 3 and the other is degree 2. So I cannot do this, I cannot do this. Okay. Now I got at the beginning that U3 is adjacent to U2. So the image of U3 must be adjacent to the image of U2. The image of U2 is chosen to be V3. So the image of U3 must be adjacent to V3. We have two edges that are adjacent to V3. V4 and V2. I cannot send U3 to V2. Because U3 is connected to two vertices that has degree 3 for each and V2 is connected to two vertices. One of them is degree 2 and the other is degree 3. So I have to send U3 to U4. What I said is recording. Keep repeating it to get the idea. So I, so I am forced now to use that. I have no choices. For the image of U1, I, had, I have two choices. I took one. For the images view 2, I have two choices. I took one. These two choices I have already taken for you for U1 and U2 forced me to choose the image of U3. I, was, I have no choices. Same thing will happen. Tell me why we are forced to choose the image of U4 to be V5. Somebody smart tells me. Where is U4? Let me erase. Where is the eraser? Let me erase all that junk now. Tell me, somebody please tell me why I am forced to send U4 to V5. There are maybe two reasons. First reason is the degree, right? Degree of U4 is 3. Somebody tell me guys, degree of U4 is 3, so I have to send U4 to a vertex of degree U3, of degree 3, right? And we have two such vertices, V3 or V5, correct? But V3 has already been chosen as an image of U2, so I have no choice. To, unless to send 
u4 to v5 as the dean u4 to v5 u4 is connected to v vertices with degree 2 yes but v1 also v1 as the dean is connect no 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 Correct, as it This is a good. Uh, no, there must there must be another vertex. As the dean saying, U four is connected to ver to two vertices. Each one of them has degree two. And we uh, so, but in H we have two vertices that each of them is connected to two vertices of degree two. What are they? U4 is connected to three vertices of degree two. Okay. Uh, okay. I will go. I don't see. I don't see the point of is it dean here. But again, u4 has degree three, so it must be t sent to a vertex of degree three. And we have only two vertices in H of that degree. They are v3 and v5. But v3 has already been chosen as an image of u2, so we are left with u5. Now, tell me now why we are forced to choose uh, f of u5. We send u5. To V1, why? Somebody tell me. U5 to V1, why? Why we send this to this? Both of them have degree 2, but we have other vertices with degree 2. So actually we have either u5 goes to v1 or u5 goes to v2, right? Because the other vertices has been taken. v6, v3, v5, uh, and v4 are taken. So uh, we, ha we are left only with v1 and v2. So u5 must go to one of them. Why we cannot send u5 to v2? Why we cannot send u5 to v2? Why we have to choose U5 to go to V1? Who tells me? U5 is connected to vertex of degree 2 and degree 3. And same thing for, for V2. It is connected to a vertex of degree 3 and another vertex of degree 1. So this is the same. Okay, uh, look at this. U four, U five, U five is connected to U four, right? So the image of U five must be connected to the image of U four. The image of U four is V five. So the image of U five must be connected to V five v2 is not connected to v5 so this goes away okay so good so we have u5 going to v1 and now u6 has no choice because one is left and then we go to that thing now what we got what we got at the end we got look at it what we got in here u1 goes to v6 u2 goes to v3 so we list them in this way u3 goes to v4 u4 goes to v5 u5 to v1 and u6 to v2 so we list them this way same thing in here and in here good now we do now we agreed on the listing of the vertices from g to h good so we will list the vertices of h this way 
v6 v3 v4 v5 v1 v2 why because this is the image of u1 image of u2 image of u3 image of u4 image of u5 image of u6 and they go the same listing in here okay now according to this listings according to this listing we go back to both of the graphs and construct the adjacency matrix according to this listing and then we look at the matrices if they come out to be the same matrix then these two graphs are isomorphic if no if they are different in one if they are different in one uh, entry then the two graphs are not isomorphic now you see here they are both of these matrices are equal and then G and H are isomorphic wow very interesting huh wow okay it's not easy to determine uh, in general whether a graph are isomorphic or no and this brings us to the end of our lecture thank you very much and i will see if you have questions